Hello everyone, it's Hedgy. This is a surprise stream. I haven't been feeling well lately, so I had to cancel my stream on Tuesday and was hoping to make this up. Uh, and so, surprise, this is a noontime stream on a Thursday. And uh, I am really distracted by my closed captioning. Um, I have got three little visitors down here. I don't know if anybody has seen them yet. These are my cute little hedge pigs. Uh, they are Christmas Gund hedge pigs, and they are red, green, and white, and they have little jingly bells in them, and they're very cute. And uh, the cat likes them, so they have to be put away so that the cat cannot get them. Uh, keep them safe. <coughs> Now, as many of you know, I, I have issues with uh, food, between food allergies and intolerances of proteins, and I've decided to make some uh, vegetarian dishes. Uh, so what I am going to be cooking today is I'm going to make a fresh pico de gallo, which is a um, fresh salsa. And that is going to go on a tofu and zucchini uh, burrito. Hey, Connor, how are you doing? Good to see you coming in here. You see me to make some uh, vegetarian food. I'm making uh, tofu and zucchini burritos. Can we give uh, Connor a shout out? Hey! <laughs> Yes, yes, boo vegetables, but I made you two whole lasagnas I was only able to eat two pieces of, so. Uh, all right, so I'm going to start out with a pico de gallo, and for a change, I am actually, uh, I actually have the recipes already up uh, in my Discord, and my pico de gallo is not as I would make it, but it's a classic recipe. Uh, it has garlic in it, which I never put in. I don't put in the cilantro either because I am one of those people that tastes it as soap. And um, I'm not putting in the jalapeno this time because I'm being very, very careful of spices because my stomach has been so upset for <laughs> such a long time. But we are going to start out making the pico de gallo. And the first thing that you want to do, it has uh, tomatoes in it, and we use Roma tomatoes because those are a very fleshy tomato. Uh, they have much less of the pulp and seeds than a standard tomato you just get off of a bush. And they make um, for very good sauce tomatoes and for putting on to sandwiches and such. So I've got four uh, Roma tomatoes, and I am going to be combining that with a uh, sweet onion, and I have got a jicama, which doesn't really have a lot of flavor in and of itself. It's a nice moist um, root kind of thing, and it has an apple consistency, so it's very crispy, it's, uh, uh, it is very crunchy and, and moist, and so it adds a lot of moisture to your dishes uh, that, you, that you would chop it up in, putting it in salads. It goes very well in things like tuna to add texture to it um, without taking on a whole lot of flavor, and yeah, it, it doesn't have a whole lot of flavor, um, but it will pick up flavors that we want to put in there. Uh, it is also going to have an avocado and some salt and some lime juice and then uh, you just mix that up together and let it sit for a while to let the flavors combine. So without further ado, let's get started on my uh, pico de gallo. So, just wash my hands, can't do a thing with them. So I will start here with the tomatoes. And the biggest thing you want to do here is you want to have almost everything cut to the same size. So we are going to start by cutting off the ends of these to take the um, heart, the stem. 
stem out of it. I don't have a second. Is, is the light bright enough for you to see things going on, honey? Because we don't have the secondary overhead on. So I am going to cut this into about a quarter inch dice. Woohoo! Extra light. And. <laughs> We are having a flyover by a Cupid Stitch. I can't do his voice or I would. Unfortunately, Curie is not here. That is Curiosity. She's a lovely streamer that uh, is very taken with Stitch and she does his voice very well. So I'm hoping she will someday come in and get to see him because she never even knew he existed in Cupid form. So. All right, we are going to take and cut this up into a nice little dice that's the same size. And you don't want to have it in really large pieces because this is a salsa, basically, and it's going to be combined into things. You can use it wherever you would use a salsa. I'm going to be putting it in my burritos, um, but you can put it in your tacos. I'm going to be making taco salads later on. Um, and I will be using it for that. Uh, the pico de gallo is a fresh salsa. Um, it typically lasts three to four days in your refrigerator before things start going slightly off. And that's mostly that the tomatoes will start to uh, ferment slightly. And we don't want them to do that. So they start getting this kind of sweet and slightly tangy taste to them as the uh, sugars in the tomatoes start to ferment and um, it can cause some fairly bad stomach upset if you do that. Um, so I'm going to just continue cutting my tomatoes. And now I guess it's possible you could do some canning or something for this, but I've never tried it. Pico de Gallo doesn't tend to stick around long, and uh, there are just some things that you have to be really careful about canning. Tomatoes is one of them. Tomatoes requires a pressure canner um, in order to be safely canned, and I do not have one of those, so um, quite honestly, uh, pressure cookers scare the pee wadden out of me, and um, I know they're safer than they used to be. You used to be able to have them, and they would, if you didn't open them carefully enough, you could blow the top off of the things, and uh, people could get hurt, you could damage your kitchen, and not to mention destroy your canner. Um, so I just never explored that kind of canning. The canning that I do is either um, refrigerator type where you're just basically doing a short order um, canning that just lasts in your refrigerator a very short time. Or uh, I have done the water bath canners which um, you just have to follow a Basically, there's a formula for what your uh, level is uh, by sea level, and you just have to follow the directions for the safe canning, make sure you have the right headspace, make sure that you've mixed up everything properly, and that you put it in its boiling water bath for the correct amount of time by sea level, and also by what your what you're actually trying to can. So if you're trying to can pickles, that's uh, one length of time, and maybe if you're canning jams, it's something else. So um, again, this is something that takes some looking up to do, and your recipes for canning will tell you that, and possibly someday I'll show you some canning that aren't refrigerator pickles, but uh, that would take a better setup have here and I'm just not willing to do that to my husband right now uh, because canning is a bit labor intensive and I don't think he would enjoy it. So, uh, I'm almost done now with the tomatoes and as you can 
see, although there's a little bit of juice in here, the majority of what you get with a Roma tomato is the fleshy part of the tomatoes. If anybody has some questions over what I'm doing here, uh, please feel free to ask them. And um, like I said, uh, unlike the habit I've gotten into lately, I actually have the recipes for this already in my Discord. And you can also feel free, if you belong to the Discord, to put in uh, stream suggestions, requests for things you want to see me cook. I have a request in there for my chicken mushroom chowder, and I will hopefully be doing that soon. The mushrooms are starting to come back to the area and looking okay in the stores again. And the chicken mushroom chowder really should be called mushroom chowder with some chicken in it. Um, it has a lot of mushrooms, <laughs> and although it has a decent amount of chicken, the main star of the chowder is the, uh, is the mushrooms. Um, I've also got a request for my Greek stuff, uh, lamb, and that can also be made with pork or chicken. And I understand the pork version tastes very good. I've eaten the chicken version and it is absolutely fabulous. If you don't happen to like lamb or lamb's a little bit pricey beyond your um, capability for just trying a recipe. Um, I usually buy a boneless leg of lamb and those are running, back when I first started making the recipe, they were about $25, $26 for the whole leg. And these days, they've about doubled that, and they're about 50 bucks. So it's, it's quite the pricey dish. I think they're worth it, because I absolutely adore lamb. But uh, you may disagree. Lamb, for some reason, isn't that popular in the United States, uh, especially in different areas. Uh, we do actually have Washington lamb here, and so it's a little more popular, but... It's very hard to find in some areas. Um, do not know what my husband is doing. <coughs> anyway, so we've got the we've got the uh, tomatoes in there. I do not think this is going to be a big enough container for the pico de gallo. Now I've got a sweet onion here. And I'm going to peel it. This one's kind of a small one. Um, it doesn't have to be large. You don't really want to have one that's really huge into the onions. Make sure when you're chopping down over a vegetable, you keep your hands out of the way. Uh, you can very easily chop into your finger, or in some cases, uh, when you're dealing with a very hard-fleshed um, item like a, a squash or a gourd, uh, you can actually push on it hard enough where you can sever a finger, and that's, that's no fun. So that takes all the fun out of cooking and gives you a very expensive uh, recovery and trip to the emergency room and hospital. So make sure when you're putting your knife into something and putting pressure on it, keep your fingers curled up and out of the way when you push down on it to be safe. Are we still having audio problems, sweetheart? Where's the meat? This is a vegetarian dish and you still have a whole tray of lasagna that you could eat, so I have no pity for you. <laughs> I have also been having some people request that I make vegan and vegetarian dishes, and I will say that instead of using tofu in this recipe, you could very easily use chicken, or um, you could even use beef, or uh, shrimp would be good as this as well. 
And again, this is, we want to keep the sizes all about the same. I've chosen about a quarter inch dice, and that's what we are going to continue with. Get the onion skin that's clinging to the knife off. So the biggest thing with the vegetarian food, um, it really does need to be fresh. Use lots of fresh vegetables, use fresh ingredients, because all you've really got is the vegetables in this. And you want to have them have the very best flavor. And, you know, as you would expect, using uh, very fresh vegetables has a better flavor. Uh, try to find things when they're in season um, and use them if you can. And, you know, in a lot of cases, a lot of the vegetables can be found in a uh, frozen section. So you can find diced avocado, for instance, and it, yeah, this is not going to be a big enough to eat. Um, you can find diced avocados now that are frozen, and you can thaw them, and they are They are ripe and nice, and I have used them on my stream in the past. I've got a fresh avocado. Uh, it's not completely ripe, but in a day it will be. So that's fine. It'll just be a little bit hard for the... Uh, it won't have that really nice creaminess of the uh, ripe avocados, but it's very close to being ripe, so... I'll show you how to deal with them. If you have never uh, taken the stone out of a uh, avocado, I will show you how to do it here. It's not anywhere near as intimidating as some people make it look. You. Um, do we have a bigger plastic container than this, one of the clear plastic ones that we use? Hmm. Okay, so this is a jicama, as you see. Let's see if I can get it to focus on that. Anyway, it is spelled J-I-C-A-N-A, -A, and that's pronounced jicama. And like I said, it's a nice, crispy, extremely hard root critter. Switch. Wait. And they have a, a kind of a potato-like skin. They kind of look like a turnip-shaped potato. And like I said, they are very hard, so be careful when you're cutting through them. At least till you get the outer layers off. And this one looks a little desiccated, but that's okay. Peel the outsides off. Easier to use a littler knife. I have little hands. As compared to my husband's. My hand actually has a nine inch octave stretch uh, for playing pianos. Um, sure. Um, 
as I said, the hickama kind of looks like a potato. Um, they vary in color on the inside from sort of a, a very pale tan to being almost a pearly white. So it can vary there quite a bit, which is nice. Uh, let me see. Here is my avocado. This is a hot avocado. Don't know if that means anything to anybody, but it's a fairly good brand of avocado. Species, I guess I should say. Once upon a time, avocados were called alligator pears because they kind of looked like a pear and an alligator had a baby from the outside. They have a very rough outside skin, which is very bitter to the taste, um, which I will mention because you do not want to uh, lick your fingers after you've been dealing with the outside of the avocado the rind. It's just all nasty. into the larger bowl. Okay. All right, now how you deal with these little devils is you want to take a knife and find the center of the avocado here by where that little stem area is. And you want to put your knife directly into it and cut downwards until you hit the seed, which is in the middle, or the stone. And then you slowly roll the avocado in your hand. Be careful because your knife can slip and that can just be bad. And you will cut all the way around and at that point you just take your hands on each half and you give it a little twist and your avocado opens up. Now what you have is a half that does not have the stone in it and you have the half that does. Now, if you are very careful about this and take it out very gently with a spoon or something, uh, you can take this um, stone and put like four um, toothpicks in it very gently so that it's pierced just enough so that it will the, the it, they're like spokes on a wheel and this is the center of it and you can take a glass of water and just suspend this so that the bottom half here is in the water uh, you can actually sprout it and get an avocado bush which is kind of cool but what we want to do is hold the knife gently in your hand thank you sweetheart and you take and basically Hack into it like that, carefully. And then you twist it a little to the left, twist it a little to the right, and hope it didn't do what mine just did, in which case it didn't come out. Fine. If it was a little riper, it would have. But it just didn't want to give way, so I'll leave that alone for now. Try to get it out. Spoon. May cost me a little bit of the flesh, but that's okay. Got some plastic spoons I use here for tasting. And I am just going to dig slightly around this. And yeah, this is only like maybe a day from being perfectly ripe. So the flesh is still nice and soft in here. It's just being a little bit stubborn because it is just that little bit off being perfect. Now, if you've never had an avocado before, um, avocados have a very creamy texture. They have a very good oil in them. And as you see, here's the seed. And it is actually one of the highest vegetables in uh it contains potassium. So if you're potassium shy, this is a good thing for you to eat. Hi, Jake. How are you doing? I hope you uh, are doing good today. I'm making some vegetarian food. 
which is probably not to most people's taste that watch me, but eh, it's good. Like I said, you can actually make this with chicken or beef or shrimp instead of the tofu I'm going to cook. All right, now to get the avocado out of here, you just got back from school. Ah, have you have you uh, gotten a hold of Maverick yet? I haven't been able to reach him to tell him I was streaming, and this isn't my usual day or time. So I haven't been able to tell him that I'm streaming. <laughs> yeah, and I I I'm not punishing you. I was punishing you I would have made something a lot more complicated and I would have chosen to do this either Friday or the Sunday after your birthday but I'm gonna give you a three-day weekend so you don't have to do anything and I can just eat my leftovers of what I'm doing here which for anybody who's joining me later uh, this is zucchini and tofu burritos uh, with a fresh uh, pico de gallo, which I am making. And as you can see, these peel pretty easily. Another thing I like to do with avocados, just because they're, they're so good. They really are so good. When you hollow them out like this, when you take, if you get a large one, um, these are pretty small. This is actually a pretty small avocado. Uh, when you remove the the stone from it you get this hollowed out side on each side and you can just cut off a little bit of the bottom side here um, so that it will sit flat and you can put them on a pan and crack an egg into each side so it, it goes here into the hollow you crack an egg into it and you put it in the oven and bake it and then bring it out and you have a baked egg in your avocado which is now creamy and tasty and yummy and you've got this nice baked egg in it you sprinkle a little bit of bacon on top of it and it makes a very good breakfast it's actually very healthy for you um, avocado oils and avocados themselves are very healthy so now what we will want to do with this is cut it into the dice as well for the pico de gallo. And now avocados are one of those um, many kinds of vegetables that if they do not have acid on them immediately, they'll start to turn a little brown and they'll be a little less pretty. But uh, it doesn't do anything to the flavor. Um, if I were going to make this into a um, guacamole, I would immediately after cutting them, I would put them uh, in and sprinkle lemon or lime juice on them to keep them from browning. And I probably actually will do that in this case because uh, it'll start getting some of the other flavors in this getting to get together. So... And this is just a matter of just cutting everything up to the same size and seasoning it. And then you've got a nice, tasty, uh, fresh salsa to use on any of your Mexican dishes that you like. Put it on eggs. Uh, it goes very nicely on eggs. It's good in salads. More things with vegetables. down in there. And I'm going to take, and I did not get fresh limes. I couldn't find fresh limes that were decent. So instead I got lime juice, which is perfectly fine. And I am going to 
sprinkle the lime juice over here. It's about the equivalent of a tablespoon or so, I believe. What I'm doing here. And this will help keep it from uh, turning colors on us. Hey, Matt. I'm glad you could be reached for this. This is probably about a quarter teaspoon of sea salt that I'm grinding up on this. I am making a fresh pico de gallo to go with my tofu and zucchini burritos I'm making today. And mixing this around in here. There's going to be more that comes into it, but I wanted to get the avocado all mixed around with the lime juice and salt. And this would normally have some garlic in it. And in most produce areas, they have minced garlic already in jars. And if you don't want to buy a head of garlic and have it just kind of sit around, or you just don't like going through all the trouble of mincing the garlic all the time and trying to take the outside off of it, the skin and off, just buy it in a jar and use it, keep it in the refrigerator. And this is a jicama, which I am going to be adding to this because, as I said, it doesn't really have a lot of flavor on its own. Uh, it has the texture of an apple, uh, although it is a root vegetable, and it just adds um, a really nice crunch to things. Probably could use the full jicama here. I might save it for. I am going to save it for whatever tofu egg salad. So I've got my jicama. I am now going to cut that into inch dice as well. How are you guys? Uh, yeah, I, I, I've been feeling really bad lately and uh, I didn't feel good enough to stream on Tuesday and I wasn't sure what time I was going to feel well enough to stream today. Um, I wasn't even sure I was going to feel well enough until, I don't know, about four or five hours ago and decided to do my stream today and do it early, just so, I don't know. It just seemed like a good time, that way then I didn't waste the time I was feeling good on not streaming. So this is the jicama and it's being added to the pico de gallo just to add some extra crunch to it because texture is always nice, especially when you're talking about vegetable dishes where you're talking like seeing cooked vegetables with um, uh, raw vegetables in this case. Um, it adds something to the interest of the dish when you've got crunchy things here. And let me see if I can describe the taste of this. There's a little bit of sweetness to it, but nothing like you'd have in like an apple. Um, it is very juicy. So that's nice. It kind of looks like a raw, a raw potato, but the flavor is um, I could say somewhere between an apple and a radish, maybe. So it's an interesting thing to add to it. And normally this would also have um, some uh, cilantro in it. I am one of the people who, it seems to be a genetic thing where some percentage of the population tastes uh, cilantro as soapy. And I taste it as soapy. Hey, we have a welcome in first viewer. Uh... Come on, Tyburns. What's the white vegetable in the pico? That is a jicama. I've got onion in here. 
What was that? C. Monty Burns. Oh, C. Monty Burns. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, it, this has got, if you join my Discord, you'll have the recipe for it. This has got a sweet onion in it. It has got jicama. It has got uh, avocado and tomato. It would normally call for garlic, but I'm allergic to garlic. I don't like the taste of cilantro, so I haven't added that in here. And because my stomach has been upset, I am not adding jalapeno, but I am going to add some uh, chipotle Tabasco, which is basically a smoked, um, it is a smoked jalapeno. So you get a smoky flavor, and it is um, quite, um, quite a bit milder than um, your regular jalapeno would be. And it also doesn't have a lot of that vinegar taste to it that a regular Tabasco sauce has. And I am going to taste this now to see if I need to add any more salt or anything else to it. It actually does need a little bit more of the lime juice to it. Into it. So I'm adding probably another teaspoon of lime. And I'm going to add a little bit more salt to it. Basically, Pico de Gallo is a fresh salsa. So you have the raw vegetables instead of um, the ones that are slightly cooked from being in a salsa and being canned. So you get a lot more texture. There's a fresher taste to it. And that's, that's a lovely thing to have. So uh, you can use this on eggs. You can use it in tacos, taco salads, burritos, like I'm going to use it. And that's ready now for when I decide to use it. I'm going to move on to my burritos that I'm making. Now, uh, once again, you can go to my Discord and get the recipes. They are actually already up this time. And the first thing you want to deal with is the tofu. Tofu comes uh, water-packed, and it comes in a 12 to 16 ounce block. It looks kind of like this. And uh, you need to press it in order to get the extra water out of it. Make it so that it can absorb uh, flavors. And because what you're pressing the water out for is to allow the tofu to suck in flavors of whatever it is you want it to have the flavor of. So a lot of cases that is a sauce or it's spices or it even gains flavor from the cooking process as well. So everything that you add to the tofu after you have pressed the water out, these act like little flavor sponges and they suck it up. If you have not taken the water out of them, then you're leaving all the water in and that's going to be blocking the flavor of your uh, dish out. Hey, Tina Bug. Welcome in, welcome in. No, no, it's fine. I, I am cooking at a very strange time for me. Um, I am just starting to make my tofu and zucchini burritos. I've already made the fresh pico de gallo. My recipes are already up in my Discord. And that's something that I try to do and have been failing miserably at. But everything's caught up now. So uh, you will find all of my recipes. Every time you do something is a strange time. <laughs> okay, so the pico de gallo, I did not put the garlic in it. I didn't put the cilantro in it. I didn't put the jalapenos. Instead, I used a chipotle Tabasco sauce. 
to give you a, a slight smoky heat to it. I used jicama and tomatoes and avocado and sweet onion. And that will combine to, um, and lime juice and some salt. And that will combine to make a very nice, crunchy, slightly sweet, slightly spicy um, sauce. Okay, so now, unlike a lot of the um, times when I'm frying something, when you're frying tofu, you don't really want to wet fry it um, because it's going to try to soak in everything that you put in there, and we don't want it to do that. We want it to have the ability to um, absorb the spices and to gain a slight uh, browning to the outside. And the only way you're going to get a really solid browning to the outside is if well, you bake it or if you bread it, and that's not what we're trying to do here. Um, so I'm just going to open these up as much as I can. This is about a pound of tofu. It has been pressed. You need to press it for 15 to 30 minutes, depending on how you press it. Um, I normally have a tofu press, and... We've misplaced it, so I've actually ordered in some more. And uh, they run about $20 from Costco, and I'm probably not Costco, Amazon, and I will include the link for that if you're interested in getting a tofu press. And um, you will, uh, if you don't have a tofu press and you don't do it, use it often enough to really need one. You can put it on a dinner plate and put another dinner plate on top of it and then put in about a gallon container of water or a couple of 28 ounce, um, a couple 28 ounce uh, cans of tomatoes or something like that. And that will press the water out of it in about 15, 20 minutes, something like that. And it's something you need to do with firm and extra firm tofu. And it's not something you do with silken tofu or soft tofu because those are tofus that have like a pudding texture. And they're used in different, they're, they're not used in these kind of applications. Now, uh, what we are going to add to this, this is chili powder. And I am going to lightly dust this with chili powder. And this is using, well, perhaps, huh? This is adding uh, perhaps a quarter of a teaspoon of chili powder to it. And like I said, this is going to um, give a flavor to the tofu and it will be a Mexican flavor. And now I have got ground cumin, and that's going to have an equal amount here. And I'm going a little spice light on this just because I've been having so many problems lately. And then I'm going to add just the slightest little bit of salt here. all we're going to be using until this is browned and um, at that point then I will be finishing it with uh, a little bit of lime juice on it. Now this is basically the same way if I was going to make fish tacos I would choose tilapia because it's a nice firm flesh fish. It is fairly inexpensive and it makes excellent tacos. Now what I would do with that is I would take and sprinkle a little bit of salt, some cumin, and some chili powder on both sides. I would pan fry it until it's cooked. And then as I took it off and put it onto a plate to wait for the rest of uh, being assembled into a taco, I would sprinkle it with fresh lime juice or squeeze fresh lime juice over each of the fillets. And it just makes such a good flavor then. I, I cooked this once out at work. Um, I was working at the Hanford uh, Nuclear Reservation, and uh, 
we had a facility there that included kitchens and we were having a group lunch and I decided instead of bringing food in I was going to cook it there and I decided to make fish tacos because fish tacos was fish is something that I could eat and I was pescatarian vegetarian at the time completely and people could smell the fish cooking not you I smell something fishy they could smell the seasonings on the fish they could smell the cumin and chili powder and when the line hit it I had people coming out of the woodwork asking me what I was cooking and what I was doing it for and some of them were very disappointed it was just for my group but <laughs> I did try to let some of the uh, other people that um, were in the area and had done me favors I let them uh, have little bits of it I let them have a taco here and there and that made them very happy some guys brought in sandwich stuff and all but I promise you when you, you cook this stuff you, you start to smell the seasonings warming and toasting you start to smell them combining with your uh, protein source whether in this case you could do it with fish you could do it with shrimp you could do it with tofu here you could do it with beef or you could do it with chicken and when you're done cooking it you put the lime over it and it just it changes the scent and it's just it's such a lovely scent so this you basically want to cook for about uh, eight minutes about four minutes on a side if you can um, get it to do that and with tofu it's a little bit um, here and there if you can you might end up with, you want to get at least a couple sides of it browned a little bit. And um, like I said, this is, this is a very nice nonstick pan. I would probably increase the oil if I didn't have such a nice nonstick pan. But uh, this is being cooked at a medium, medium high in between there. And it is just turning the tofu around and getting it to absorb some of the flavors uh, that I'm trying to add in here. And like I said, tofu doesn't really ever brown like a meat. So um, if you start, if you get it to get a little bit golden, you're pro probably as good as you're going to get unless you put a coating on this. And I could have, I could have breaded it, but uh, I'm trying to go a bit less uh, breading wise on this. I, I prefer the flavors. Even when I'm talking about making like a fish taco, I don't bread it. I, I will pan fry the fish and, and not have anything other than the seasonings on it. I don't feel that it really needs it. And all the breading does is get a little sloppy when you start adding the other seasonings or other sauces to it. Um, but in any case, this is going to go into a burrito, and if I feel like not using all of this in a burrito, I can have a taco shell instead of a burrito, or I could put it on top of uh, shredded lettuce, add in my pico de gallo, add some sour cream, and mix it up, and then I could have basically a vegetarian taco salad made with the same filling. These burritos are going to be made with tofu. They're going to have some onion, and they will have zucchinis, and they will have some mushroom added into it, and some bell pepper. And then all of that will be sauteed, and then I will be adding in some black beans. And that will go then into a toasted slightly blistered actually is what you call it when you take a flour tortilla and put it into a dry pan over heat you basically blister it slightly so it cooks the flour tortilla a bit softens it so it really won't break and you get these little blistered areas which are toasted whereas the rest of the tortilla is still a pale color and uh, then you flip it over and it, it, it takes like 30 seconds aside maybe 
um, doesn't take a long time. But in this case, for the tofu, we are doing kind of a dry fry, which is not something I'm going to do with the vegetables when it gets to be their turn. Very fortunate I actually like tofu. Um, a lot of people do. You could, uh, another vegetarian version that you could do with this, you could make it with um, never actually heard anybody pronounce it. Of course I do, you weirdo. Well, honey, I, I, I've i been mostly a vegetarian, as you know, from my mid-30s, so we're coming up on 20 years now, so if I didn't like tofu, I'd be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> I'd either be completely a pescatarian, because so far fish is the only thing other than tofu products and the other vegetable products that don't run the risk of making me sick. So if you can see this here, it's got a little bit of color on it now, and that's about as good as it's going to get, really, as far as toasting this way. I could continue to cook it, and it would basically just dry the tofu out, and that's not very pleasant. It's kind of like eating dry uh, chicken at that point. So, we don't really want to do that, so we just want to make sure that we've got the, the tofu a chance to get a little browned on the sides and um, to absorb the flavors of the spices that I put on it, which I'm pretty sure it has. I'm going to pull a piece out and taste it. Hmm. Pretty nice. You could probably go a little heavier on the seasonings than I did here. Follow the directions rather than just lightly uh, sprinkle them because I was going for very light seasoning on mine. Um, so these are done. And what I will do with them, take one of my handy dandy bacon trays and I will dump this out of here. Probably shouldn't be using my fingers. And then at this point, to finish the flavors of this, I'm going to take my lime juice and just kind of sprinkle it over the tofu that's been cooked. And yeah, I would do the same thing if I was doing this with chicken or fish or beef. Um, the lime combining with the cumin and the uh, chili powder. I'm sorry, am I too quiet again or am I now too loud? And you can smell the difference the minute the lime gets on here. It goes from just being a slightly uh, chili flavored scented thing to suddenly it, it smells more like a fajita. Uh, so we're going to continue on with that. Put that out of the way. And now I'm going to move on to the other vegetables, which starts with a uh, sweet onion here. As I said, cut off the one end. You leave the root end here, and you cut through that carefully. Set your blade in it, and then... Push down with your fingers out of the way so you run no risk to your hands. And I am going to use more of a, I, I can use a dice on this. I am going to spray this with more canola oil because the tofu absorbs the canola oil. I am going to get it started with mushrooms in it because the mushrooms, um, actually most of the vegetables take about the same time to cook. So mushrooms will add a nice meaty texture to this. And that's eight ounces of mushrooms there. And while they're starting to cook, I will clean the onion here I'm going to use. 
the other half of the onion now with the other vegetable I'm putting aside for later. And I'm just peeling off the outside here. And I could do a dice, but I'm actually not going to. I'm going to make this into little onion strips. More like you would see with a fajita. But I'm going to cut down through this at slight angles. All kind of radiating out from the heart here. So I'm kind of making onion wedges because I don't want really big onion wedges. I'm now going to take and cut in half. So they're just kind of onion stick at this point. And I will take and put that in there with the mushrooms. I'm going to take a bell pepper, and I've got several different colors here. And I've got a red, an orange, and a yellow. Bell peppers are all the same pepper, by the way, uh, no matter what color it is. It starts out at green when it's the least ripe, and then it cycles into yellow and gets a little sweeter and milder. It cycles into orange, and then it gets a little sweeter and milder. And it ends up being red, which is the sweetest version of it. And it is the mildest and sweetest. So if what you're looking for uh, is something that has the flavors of a pepper without any of the kind of burkability. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't even hear all the sizzling. Okay. Uh, now, a nice little thing that you can do with your bell peppers is you can actually cut around the outside of it and cut it off with the slabs. And what you'll end up with is almost all of the membrane and all of the seeds still here in what looks like a little cage. So here we end up with this page of pepper, and you've got pretty much all the usable areas off, but you don't have any seeds, and you don't have any of the membrane to deal with, so it makes it very uh, neat. And instead of doing a dice, once again, I'm going for a little uh, eye interest and also um, just a bit more of uh, a uh, pretty look when you are putting this together. I'm not going to leave them full length, which I would if they were fajitas, but I am going to uh, leave them in strips, but cut them in half so they're not incredibly long. You don't want to have everything be really large in your burrito because it makes it very messy to eat, but you don't want to have everything be so tiny pretty much just an unidentifiable patch in the middle of the dirt. So, this now I wasn't able to get as many zucchini as I wanted, and the ones I did get are probably some of the smallest zucchini I have ever seen off of a bush. Um, I would consider them to be kind of baby zucchinis, actually. They are about half the length of what I would normally pick for zucchini. But that's okay. I've got enough other vegetables here and just tofu and that's good for me. So I'm going to do some potato for my breakfast. You're really not going to miss it. It's going to be pretty much all the same flavor. All the same size is going in together. Oh, look at that. Let's take that off. Really should have looked for that. That is the uh, strip off the back. 
which says it is a bell pepper. The green bell peppers are what most people are used to looking at, and uh, they have the harshest flavor. If you feel kind of burpy after eating a bell pepper and you don't like it because of that, it's probably because what you're eating was a green bell pepper, and like I said, they are the harshest of them. So I'm going to mix this around in here. And the idea isn't to cook the living tar out of these things. You don't, you don't want to have them all be a soft mush. You want to have the vegetables be still a little bit resistant to your tooth. You want to know when you're biting into something that it's not just a mouthful of mush. So that is what we are doing with that. That's part of why I cut the things the way I did. However, I do have to make sure that the mushrooms themselves have, are cooked all the way through. So that takes about 10 minutes uh, for them to release their juices into it. Like I said, these are very small zucchinis. I'm used to seeing them about twice this size, and that would be one zucchini. Oh, well. So I am cutting off each end of the zucchini. And now uh, I take and I cut it down the center in half. And then I basically cut it into about a quarter inch wide uh, slice. Zucchini, when it gets cooked all the way and gets tender, is a lovely thing. And it's just, it's, it's actually one of my favorite squashes. I don't like a lot of squashes. But zucchini was my childhood favorite. And until my cousin Tara introduced me, to spaghetti squash. Uh, it was really the only squash I could tolerate. The rest of them kind of, there's something about them I just don't like. So I don't like um, acorn squash or uh, butter, um, butternut squash. I don't particularly care for Hubbard squash. Just kind of tastes like bad pumpkin pie to me. Um, I, they feel like they need something, and I just have never been able to figure out. Pumpkins I do like in pie form. Other than that. Oh, I'm sorry. I do also like them in uh, pumpkin spice Cheerios. I like them pumpkin um, pop tarts, which taste like little pies. And uh, I absolutely love pumpkin lattes. They all have the same pumpkin spices in it, the warming spices, the ginger, cinnamon, and cloves. So it's all much of a muchness there. The rest of my zucchini in. Sorry, honey. We've uh, been experimenting with where exactly we are putting the uh, microphone to try to make it so when I turn my head, I'm not turning it out of the range of the microphone. So right now the microphone is front and center, uh, right about here. You can kind of see the shadow of it, and it makes it so it's a little harder for me to go mute when I turn my head trying to get something off of my supply table. Uh, because before, my microphone was over here, and the only time you heard me well was when I was staring straight ahead, and if I turned to the side and kept talking, uh, I'd just fade out completely. So, that's not good. So, now I'm going to add a little bit of salt to these vegetables. Not a lot, but you do want to make sure that your everything you're cooking is seasoned. I am going to add a little bit of chili powder in here too because I went so light with the chili powder on the tofu. So I am just going to very lightly sprinkle some chili powder over this.
pink pig. And this is about 10 minutes from being where I will start adding things back into it. It takes about eight to 10 minutes to saute uh, the zucchini. Oh, we've got a pink pig. And pink pig. He's so happy to see tofu. Um, 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 um. <laughs> she is one of my many hedgehog toys that my husband has bought for me. Okay, so a lot of what I'm doing here is just shifting around the vegetables to make sure that what is on the top gets to be on the bottom so it gets a closer uh, touch to the heat. And this is on between a medium and medium high. Um, I need a drink here. you're looking for here in the zucchini it will go from being white in the center to turn uh, slightly translucent and just like when onions are cooked here as you can see they're not white anymore they've gone translucent uh, that means they are about as cooked as I want them to be the mushrooms are starting to release their juices so they're almost cooked and what you will see with the zucchini is they go from being white to be turning a slightly different color. And you start to see the center of the zucchinis. You start to see the uh, seeds so that they look kind of like a, if you were picturing um, an orange slice, uh, it's kind of like that. You have the rind area around the outside right underneath the actual skin of it. There's a little area and then you get into the center pulp where it has the seeds in it. And the smaller the zucchini, the smaller the seeds, which is part of why really small zucchini like this are very popular. But I grew up with zucchini gardens and it was very hard to catch the zucchini this small. Usually you had zucchini that were about, you know, a good two inches across and they were, you know, at least a foot long. And somehow, no matter how we did it, we always ended up having some absolute monsters show up that were, you know, two and a half feet long and a good six to eight inches across. And uh, I used to make zucchini bread out of them, but I found my cousin gave me a couple that had hidden from her. She said she swore they had never been there, but suddenly, hello, there they were underneath some leaves. And... So she gave me these zucchini that were so tough being older and so thick in their skin because they were that big that unless you were to peel them and dice them down or shred them all and use them for zucchini bread, really the only thing you could do with them is stew them. So I took these big zucchini and I cut them into about one inch slabs and I put them in my crock pot along with hot salted water and about a stick of butter and I stewed those little devils for I don't know probably two hours and then oh they were so good but then again I really love zucchini so uh, I thought they were fabulous and I ate zucchini pretty much non-stop for a couple days and was a very very happy hedge pig so this is closing in on being where I want it to be. It's probably another five minutes off, actually, if I'm really honest about it. Um, I need to get the mushrooms cooked all the way through because if you don't cook your mushrooms through, 
well you're missing a bit you don't have the full flavor development and you're just missing out um, cooking each food properly is uh, the most respectful thing you can do for your dollar that you've spent and and with the way the groceries are going up lately you really can't afford to waste anything really and you might as well enjoy it if you bought it so you're talking so I saw in the news they were saying they expected groceries to go up another five or six percent this year so brace yourselves um, finding dishes that are economical and healthy for you uh, is going to get a little more challenging so I'm probably going to be focusing on some casseroles and things like that both vegetarian and not the next dish I plan to make after this one is my favorite kind of go-to recipe for when I'm going to someone else's house like for family uh, get-togethers if we're having dinner and I don't know what they're going to cook. Um, something a lot of vegetarians have run into over the years is people don't really understand what it is they need to do to cook for you. And so uh, I got a lot of invites to family Christmases and Thanksgiving and I said, well, what the what have you got there that I can eat? Um, and they say, well, you can't eat the turkey, you can't have the ham, you can't have the roast beef, whatever it is. And I say, but, you know, we've got uh, mashed potatoes and uh, we've got some corn. and We'll make a salad. And basically, um, they don't know how to handle you, so they just sort of say, well, we'll make lots of side dishes and make sure there's a salad. And... Uh, it really doesn't make for a dinner. Yeah, you can make do, but it really doesn't make for a dinner. And one of the recipes I made up first um, as a vegetarian was I would roast a spaghetti squash, so named because when you uh, put a fork into it, what it does is the inside of the squash actually shreds up to look like noodles. and they keep a lovely crunchiness to them, even when they're cooked completely. So uh, they have a bit of a crunch. They're, they have a mild uh, squash flavor to them. And I take uh, some tofu and I pan fry the tofu and add it into the uh, spaghetti squash and add in some cheese and some other things. And in doing that, I end up with a casserole, which I can then take and uh, put some uh, onion gravy over. And it kind of feels a little bit more like a dinner. You've got your tofu for your protein. You have your spaghetti squash, which gives you kind of like almost a pasta dish. It's got some cheese in it and some seasonings. Then you have the... Uh, you have the onion gravy over the top of it, and when you have the salad on the sides and the mashed potatoes and all, you've got yourself a complete meal. So um, it's something that's really very yummy, and it, it, it feels more like a celebration rather than, oh, I'm just eating some sides. Um, and it's something that if you're not a vegetarian, you could very easily make for a vegetarian guest and really surprise them with uh, being able to give them something that is delicious and um, a complete meal for them. So, and it doesn't taste bad at all. Um, my husband has eaten tofu a time or two and he's eaten some meat replacements, doesn't enjoy them as much. I think his opinion is if he's going to be eating tofu, he'd rather have it be tofu. Um, although the way we, he's mostly eaten that was in uh, fried tofu from a Chinese restaurant. It was a Chinese restaurant that we really liked in uh, the Tri-Cities. And they made the same sweet and sour sauce I do. It's only the second restaurant I've ever found that makes it 
as a cherry base rather than a pineapple base uh, for their sweet and sour. And they would take uh, fresh tofu and they would deep fry it. So it was crispy on the outside and soft on the inside. And then they'd have this lovely cherry sweet and sour uh, that you could either dip it in or mix it up with. And it just was lovely. Okay, so this is, they are almost done. They are within a minute or two of being done here. So at this point, I am going to add a 15 ounce can of black beans. And this is both drained and rinsed because the black beans, when they're canned, they kind of make this uh, protein goo around the outside of them. It isn't exactly the most pleasant thing to chew on. Um, so rinse your black beans and, and drain them well, and then you'll just enjoy the flavor of the black beans and the uh, almost creamy texture of them without having to deal with uh, this rather unpleasant gummy goo. I'm also going to add back in my tofu now. So the tofu is going back in this so that it will heat up. while the vegetables finish cooking. And this, oh, I wish you guys could smell this. This smells so good. You have the aroma of the uh, cumin and the chili powder. You have the vegetables that are cooking in here with it. And I smell a little bit of the lime in it as well. It's just a lovely smell. It's a, it's a faintly uh, Mexican uh, smell to it, so it doesn't just smell like sautéed vegetables. And this will have a nice mild flavor for it. So now what you see when you look at the zucchini here when they're done, I'm going to see if I can get you to see this on one of them. So you can see here, it has the dark outside skin, then it has a little creamy area. You redeemed the wrong thing. Oh, you redeemed a hydrate. What were you, what were you looking for? Trying to hydrate the white chocolate salt. White aspirinaric. Um, yeah, can you refund her, her highlight my message? Hmm. Okay. Okay. Give her back her hydrate. We'll give her that one for free. And I do thank you for the hydrate. I did drink one, so I did. I did actually hydrate here. All right. So yeah, what you basically get is this little half circle where you can see the uh, center area of the zucchini with the little seeds, and you see the creamy area around the outside. And that's really what you're looking for there. And so that is done. And it is going to go back here to my baking pan that I use for everything. Get all those nice vegetables and such out of here. Do we have a plate out here? Because we're getting very close to being done. I am going to put the pico de gallo to the side. Move the vegetables that are done off to the side. And now I need to dry out my pan here because when you do the toasting of the uh, tortillas, you don't want to have that be in a greased pan. That wants to be a dry pan. And uh, 
I'll put that back up on the sheet. Okay. Now I am going to go to have my tortillas, and these are burrito sized, super soft, mission style flour tortillas. Take one of them out and you lay it here in your pan. And this is over a medium high heat. And all you are going to be doing here is taking and I'm not going to make two because I don't think, uh, make it the white one. All you need to do here is just blister this a little bit and uh, it makes it so the tortilla shell is softer and it won't then break when you start rolling it. So like I said, it's probably about 30 seconds aside. I won't know that till I look at it. I haven't done it in this pan before. I'm not used to having a really nice thick bottom frying pan. Um, yep, I can tell it's it's working here. And I'm going to use my spoonchula because I don't want to burn my little hand. And you can see that the back now has a little bit more browning on it. The little bubbled areas here have actually toasted a bit. Um, I don't like them really, really toasted. So, yeah, like I said, it's just going to take another 30 seconds, and I will turn that off because I don't think my husband wants any of this because, as he always puts it, Caterpillar could food on it. Just move this around here a little bit. Check the bottom. It's starting to brown up. Okay, and at this point, my tortilla is done, and I can smell this, so if you don't want a burrito, do you? No, I didn't think so. <laughs> so, we've got that off. I've turned the heat off. I do not want to see it sticking to the bottom. So I will make sure it is dry. Actually, I'm so you have two different ways you can roll this. You have two different ways you can roll this, and the way you want to do it is go across the center. And so I'm going to take several spoonfuls of this with my filling, and I'm going to put it in the middle here. peppers, and onions, the black beans, my favorite squash, the zucchini. So that I have them all spread out. Now you could leave the ends open, um, but I tend to wind them in. And if there is a way to make it so uh, the way you are scooping it has, I always overstuff these. I tend to go so that the longer way is this way and I go across it so it gives me more room to stuff it. And then I am going to add some cheese. And this is a four cheese blend that they call just Mexican. And a little bit of the cheese across it here.
there it is. I've got some sour cream that's going to go on here. The next thing I'm going to do, however, is after I put that on there, I'm going to take some of my freshly made pico de gallo. Spoon out here. I'm going to spoon some of this into the middle. And like I said, I always overstuff these things. I just do. This is barely going to be able to roll up when I'm done with it. It's just the way it happens. Just got some pico de gallo over it. I'm going to get a little bit of extra avocado because I just love avocado. It's kind of, well, this is the way I was taught to make burritos. Probably closer to a soft taco would have been. Um, I probably wish I could get it. Take a little bit of shredded lettuce here. Put that on it as well. I like the taste of, of Tabasco. Put just a little bit of drops on it there. And I'll take my cream. Let's see, I have no idea. Twist cap off, pull tab. Okay. It's one of these weird ring pull things. I'll put the pot back on. And I'll put these all sour cream now. Which I'm just going to put some on my burrito. And then I'm going to turn both ends up. Take, gently roll first one side. And the other over. So what you have is a very pretty fat little taco or burrito here. And you could at this point eat it with your hands, or you could uh, eat it with a fork, which is generally how I do. And now I'm going to cut it so that everybody can see the inside. Here we have my vegetarian burrito with fresh pico de gallo. I'm going to have my husband come out and take a photograph of it. Well, I remind you all that once again, we have got the recipes already up in the Discord for the pico de gallo and for the uh, zucchini and tofu burrito. And... Uh, like I said, you can, if you don't want to do tofu with it, but you still like the idea of all the flavors I've got in here, you can make it with chicken, you can make it with beef, you can make it with shrimp or fish, and the flavors would all go together just as well. Yep, that's good. And now I'm going to show this to you all, bring it up here so that you can see it see the loveliness that is my vegetarian burrito and I'm going to take a bite oh 
I'm not gonna lie, that is so good. You can taste uh, the vegetables in here, the mushrooms, the peppers, the onions, the zucchini. You can taste the seasoned tofu, which is has the cumin and lime and chili powder on it. You've got the creaminess of the uh, beans in here as well as the avocado and the fresh pico de gallo. And you have the crunchiness of the jicama. This is just such a lovely, lovely burrito and or soft taco. And I am going to thoroughly enjoy this uh, burrito. I am also going to thoroughly enjoy it in some taco shells. And I'm going to be making it into a vegetable taco salad sometime later. So I want to thank everybody who has come. I thank you all. <clears throat> thank you all for your time. Uh, let's go to Tilday's. She is, I think, the only cooking streamer that I see that's on. I thank you all for your time. I thank you for coming. Uh, I will get the pictures of this posted to you all. You already have the recipes. Um, next time I see you will be after Andrew's birthday, so it will probably be my Monday or Tuesday stream. And I will make that spaghetti squash and tofu casserole with the onion um, gravy. So, and it is almost Andrew's birthday. His birthday is on Saturday. Everybody wish him a happy birthday. Happy birthday, sweetheart. And thank you so, so much for everything that you do. Uh, thank you all for your time. I love you guys. And we're going to go. See you later.